Hello, thank you for watching me. My name is Reverend Dr. Duke Imajaman. I'm the General Overseer for Internal Life Ministries. We are based at 727 Oakland Road, London, SA 151JL. Uh, our time of service is every Sunday from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And uh, if you want to come for counseling or for prayer, my number is 07956 921007. 07956 921007. Uh, today is going to be a great day, a wonderful day. I'll be talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus, and uh, the judgment is over, and uh, the spiritual blockage at the gate. I've talked about I've talked about these three topics, but today I want to move to a different topic that will bless your mind, that will bless your life, that will transform your life, that will give you another direction of life and um, my today's but today title today's title is the the power of the creative world the power of the creative world i'm talking about you know people don't understand that god himself is the word you know because it is the word of god that frame the earth it is the word of god that frame everything you know nothing is outside the word of god the word of god is powerful you know the word of god can activate and it can evaporate and so i'm talking about the the undiluted word of God, you know, the word that pierces, you know, the one that no man, no power that can contest with. Now, when we go back to the book of Genesis chapter 1, let me just read for you about the word of God. He said, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, you know. It was, it was an organic word of God. The word went forth. He said, let there be light. Automatically, light came into existence, you know. You know, I've said before that our God created, you know, created the world without no materials, you know. He spoke the word. There is power. Power in the word of God. You know, when that word is spoken, there is manifestation. When we look at Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, God created the whole world with the spoken word as he spoke. You no, know, it came to pass. You know, as he pronounced, there was a there was a physical manifestation of the word of God. But in Genesis chapter 2, is God coming down to create. Praise the Lord, you know, the, you know, the word God coming down to recreate, you know. So there are, there are difference between Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, let, let me read for you now. He said, he said, uh, he said uh, the, the, the Lord God formed a man out of the dust. He said, he formed man out of the dust, and he, and he breathed upon his nostrils, and the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. Praise the Lord. You see, when God, you know, created man from the from the from the earth, the Bible said that He breathed upon the man; it became a living soul. But in Genesis chapter one, it's different. Genesis chapter one, verses uh, verses twenty six. Listen to this. This is very exciting and very interesting. He said, "And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness." And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and all over the uh, over the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You see, God spoke, He created man. But in Genesis chapter 2, God coming down from heaven to mold man from the dust. And the Bible says He breathed upon him, He breathed upon the man. What am I trying to say? You know. The God of the spiritual is the same God of the physical. That is the demonstration of the of, of the story of creation. You know, I mean, one of them is by the spoken word, and one of them God coming down. That means God is physical, and it's also God is spiritual. So we need to understand this. If we don't understand this, sort of we 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 miss the aspect of Christianity. Christianity is not to do with spirit, 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 spirit. But we also want to talk about God, who 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 created man, also did the same thing physically and he brought man from the doors. You know, in Jeremiah chapter 23, Jeremiah 23 verses, um, verses 29, let me read for you, Jeremiah 23 verses 29. He said, Is my word not like a fire, says the Lord, like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces? What am I trying to say? When the word of God comes into a situation, there is no challenge. When the word of God comes into a situation, there is no controversy. When the word of God comes into a situation, it means there is a change, there is a transition. You know, when you 
you have the word of God in you, when you are a carrier of the word of God in you, the devil cannot mess you up because anytime you speak the word, there is manifestation. In Matthew chapter 4, where after Jesus has been tempted, you know, no, let us go back, let us go back to temptation. When the devil said that Jesus will turn water and you know, turn, you know, turn this stone to, to, to bread, for example, you know, what did Jesus say? He said, a man does not live by bread alone, but by the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You see, when the word came, Satan was not able to wrestle with the word of God. That's what I call the creative word of God. You know, the creative word of God creates things, it recreates. You know, the word of God has been given to us, therefore we use the word of God to recreate situations. We use the word of God to recreate uh, uh, many things on this earth. So if you look at this war, for example, you know, it is the word of God that created the whole thing. What am I trying to say? In Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12, let me quickly read for you. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. And it's a very beautiful, beautiful scripture. Hebrew 4, verse 12. He said, for the word of God is quick and powerful. My God. He said, for the word of God is what? It's quick and it's what? And it's powerful. My God. Sometimes we think that the word of God is not quick. Sometimes we think that the word of God is not powerful. Let me tell you, it's the devil. The devil may want to make us understand that God is not powerful. Even the Bible said that the devil trembles under the word of God. You know, he trembles. The devil trembles under the word of God. The word of God is quick and is powerful. You know, you need to speak the word. So let me tell you something. The Bible said in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, say my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why are they destroyed for lack of knowledge? Because they fail to understand that the word of God is quick and powerful. The word of God is quick and powerful. If you look at the ministry of Jesus, for example, from Je from uh, from Matthew to to Revelation, you will see that Jesus always used the word. You know, he always used the word, and that's why the Bible say, you know, he said God have magnified His word above His name. You know, Jesus always used the word. He said there is no other thing. He cast away demon with the word. He healed people with the word. You know, you know, he blessed people with the word. He rebuked people with the word. People who are committed, who are who are committing sin. You know, he rebuked them with the word. So the word is the final authority and that's why in John chapter 1 the Bible says, in the beginning is the word and the word was with God and the word was God you see when Jesus came into this earth right you know he came as a son of man you know he came as a son of man and he dwell with man is the word is the word that became flesh listen to that the word of God became flesh in John chapter 1 verse 14 he said the word became flesh and it dwelt among us but when Jesus died it's no longer the son, it's now the word, W-O-R-D. You know, the son, S-O-N, is now the word. You know, some people seem to think that Jesus came, you know, Jesus came uh, in, like a spirit, like some, uh, some of the religion, like um, like, uh, like, um, like uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. They, 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 they said that uh, Jesus is charisma. You know, what do you mean by charisma? It means that Jesus is, 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 is divine and man. And that is why he was able to perform all those miracles. You see, that is that's a dogma. Jesus is not is, is not is, is not divine or hum, uh, human. He's totally human when he came to this earth. There is no controversy in the Arianism during Arianism regime, regime in 15th century. He was saying that uh, Jesus is half God and half human. How can that be? That's why he was able to perform a miracle. But Jesus said in John 1 verse 12, he said, as many that have received him, he has given them the power to become the sons of God. When you have the that word of God, you have power. And that is why the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, he said, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, um, piercing, you know, even to the divided asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joint and marrow, and it, it is the center of the of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. You know, the word of God can go into your heart to look look, look what you are doing and what you are thinking. I don't let me tell you, let me tell you what him. The word of God is even faster than plane going to Nigeria. You know, you can spell to America or to 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 Ghana or to every part of the world. You can speak the word here. The world tra travel faster than any human uh, comprehension. I'm talking about the power of the world. You know. When you have that word with you, you can stand anywhere in this world. When you have that word, the word can can bring blessing. It can bring 
uh, transition. The world can bring promotion. The world can distrust stagnation. The world, he said, I like, you know, in Job chapter 5, verse 12, he said, it disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hand cannot perform their enterprise. What he said is the word of God that will destroy the devices of the crafty of the enemy. You know, when you have the word of God with you, it means the devil, the devil cannot do you nothing. You listen, I was in Australia some time ago. As I, as I was walking down the street in the afternoon, I saw two big dogs running after me. Two big dogs. I was scared. I thought, I thought my life in Australia is finished. But when they got closer to me, I spoke the word. I said, Jesus, take control. You know, the way the two dogs came to me is the same way they ran away because they, they, they hear the word of God. You know, the Bible said that every creature must hear the word. I'm talking about the creative word of God. You know, you want to be a creative human being. You want to be creative in your business. You want to be creative in your marriage. You know, you know, it's the word of God. Like Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. He said, the foolish woman destroyed their home, but the wise one, you know, build it at home. You see, it's the word of God. You see, if you want your marriage to work, word of God must be uh, uh, the chief center or the cornerstone of your marriage. Otherwise, the marriage will not work, it will not succeed. It is the word of God that will hold the marriage. He said the word will knit you together. The word will bring you to a situation that your love will not expire. I'm talking about the creative word of God. When you have the creative word of God, you become a different person. You work with boldness. In Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1, it said the enemy runneth when no man pursuing them. But the rapture shall be bold as a lion. What gives you boldness is the word of God. You know, you know when you have the word of God, you can do the, the extraordinary. You know, like Peter, when Peter was preaching on, uh, I think. Uh, the book of uh, Acts chapter 3, you know, we call it the Didache, the Didache. After Jesus had died, you know, Peter was preaching. You know, they say boldness come upon Peter. And as Peter was preaching, the Bible says that 3,000 3, people were added to the church. I'm talking about boldness, what the word of God can do. In the book of Luke chapter 11, verses, uh, verses 26, let me read for you. Luke chapter 11, this is a very beautiful, very beautiful scripture. Luke chapter 11, this is fantastic. <coughs> Sorry, verse, verse 20. Let me read from verses 26 and 27. He said, Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the, and the last state of that man is worse than the, than the first. And then he went on to say, And it came to pass as he spoke these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice. And said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bear thee, and the pap which thou hast sucked. You know, you see, when, when the woman saw the miracle of Jesus, what does the woman did? The woman was, was, uh, was giving the praise to the mother of Jesus. You know, he said the pap, when probably the breast which, which Jesus sucked. No, look, look at it carefully, you know. At the Jesus reply, look, 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 at, look at the Jesus reply. He said, He said, but he said, You rather. Bless a day that hear the word of God and keep it. See, you see, the woman wanted to divert people's attention to Jesus, uh, to the mother of, to the mother. I'm sorry, to the mother of um, of Jesus. But Jesus said, "No, it, that's not true." He said, "He said, blessed are those that hear the word of God and do it." It means the word of God is the final authority. There is no substitute for the word of God. When you have the word of God, your life is enveloped. When you have the word of God, your home is enveloped. When you have the word of God, your business is enveloped. Listen, the word of God surrounds you all. It saturates your life. You know, the word of God moves move faster in your life, than, as you can think. You see, the woman was giving praises to Mary instead of giving praises to, to God. What am I trying to say is that the word of God will, will transcend more than what you think. The word of God will transcend in a situation that will put you on a higher pedestal. And your goodness and your blessings and everything you do will come to pass. Thank you very much for watching me. Listen, it's, listen on, uh, on, on Sunday, I want to see you in the church. From 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, you never be the same. I tell you, there is a, is a, is a spiritual galore. You know, when you come, I tell you, your problem will, will dissolve. God will dissolve your problem. It's a, it's a solution center. God will give you solution to your problem. What am I trying to say? When you have the word of God with you. Listen, in the book of uh, Luke, you know, Luke chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 10, 
sorry, Luke, sorry, Luke chapter 11, chapter 10, yes, correct, 10 verses 38 to 42. There's an account of uh, Mary, uh, Mary and uh, Martha, you know, you know, both of them, you know, they love Jesus, you know, and uh, the Bible said that Jesus visited them when Jesus was coming, and Mary was sitting at the foot of Jesus, Marco Borobo. No, no, Mary is always at the foot of Jesus, but I was told that the Bible declared that Martha was extremely very busy. You know, Martha was doing a lot of things, you know, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was carried away. She was, she was, she was carried away. But let me say one thing, but Jesus said in 42, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. You know, when you have the word of God, the devil cannot take you from no, take, take that word from you. When you have the word of God, you will never be the same. When you have the word of God, that word of God will generate your life. When you have the word of God, you are carrying another power that the enemy cannot comprehend. I'm talking about the wisdom of God. Can I tell you, the word of God is the wisdom of God. When you have that word, you see, you are, you are, you are placed in, a, in, in another direction where you can no, no, no stand to declare the glory of God. And what am I trying to say? You know, Mary chose, chose the right path. May you choose the right path. May the word of God come into your life. May the word of God take away everything that brings hindrances. The Bible says in, 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 in the book of uh, Psalm chapter 107, verse 20, he said, God sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from destruction. The word of God is redemption. He said, It will deliver you, he will set you free. When you have the word of God, you'll never be the same. I tell you, when you have the word of God, everything that is ugly, everything that, that is detestable to God, anything that does not bring glory to God, the word of God will destroy it. In the name of Jesus, I'm talking of the ability to to transcend with the world. You so see, when you have the word, I'm telling you about the creative word of God. You never be the same. When you have the word, you know you can you can you can you can stand with confidence. You know, you know what I, I believe. You know about the word of God. He said in the, in the book of Je Jeremiah chapter one verse verse twelve. He said, "I will hasten my word to perform it." My God, that's a powerful word. Jeremiah one twelve. He said, "I will hasten my word to perform it." May God hasten his word to perform it in your life. May God hasten his word to perform it in your family. May God hasten his word to perform it over your business, over your, over, over, over your dreams, over your destiny. Listen, may God hasten his word. You know, when God hasten his word, you will be vindicated. I want to tell you that the word of God will, will, will bring you to a position where you, your enemy will surrender to you. And I decree that your enemy must surrender to you. Because the Bible says, it's my word not like a fire it's like a hammer that break the rock into pieces he said no with the word of god he said he commanded in the book of um, in the Psalm chapter 33 verse 9 he said he commanded and he stood you know he commanded so the word of god is a command you know when you have that word it's a command you are carrying the authority of commanding and commanding things to happen speaking it into existence you know that is the word of god will make you to be in a position where that your enemy you no know, cannot escape you know you know, he said, he said, there is a speed in the word of God. You know, the word of God is 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 a, is the, is is the, is, the, is the power that will make you go to the level of life where you have been proposed to be in your life. The word of God will make it all be. Thank you for watching me. God bless you. May the word of God be in your home. May the word of God be in your business, in your marriage, in your life, in your prayer life. May the word of God activate you. May the word of God bring revival to your spirit. May the word of God you know, bring blessing to you. May, he, may the word of God favor you in a season. May the word of God you know, bring a promotion into your life. You know, word of God have to you know have transformed a lot of people. Like Joseph. You know, the word of God transformed Joseph. The word of God transformed Job. You know, all those people, they became successful because they are the carrier of the word of God. God bless you. Thank you very much. May you be the carrier of the word of God. May the creative word of God create a new thing, new opportunity in your life. And you'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching me. I'll see you next week. Remember that, you know, come and worship with us at 727 Oakland Road, London, SC15, 1JL. I'm talking of internal life ministry. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that to save our believers in him will not perish but have everlasting life, which is eternal life. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. See you. Ciao. See you. Uh, don't forget, this is part one of Creative Word of God. I'll continue again in my next series, part two. 
Listen, you must watch me. You will never be the same. Thank you very much. See you. Bless you.